Sexual health. Let me ask you first, are you aware of your sexual health? So for today, we're going to talk about this topic. And we're not only going to focus on the main definition of sexual health, but we're also going to tackle some of its subtopics like sexual health issues, importance of sexual health, and even some myths and facts. So first, let us define what is sexual health. So first, what is sex? Sex is a system that distinguishes or defines male and female organisms that propagate species to sexual reproduction, where, which we are all familiar about. And then the health. The health is a complete state of physical, emotional, and social well-being that is not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. And then lastly, we have the sexual health. Sexual health is a state of the physical, um, emotional, social, mental well-being that is related to sexuality. So now let us give the, a more broader definition of what sexual health is. So sexual health is a fundamental to the overall health of individuals, families, social, and economic development of communities and countries. It also requires a respectful approach to sexuality and sexual relationships as well as having the possibility of pleasurable sexual experiences that is free from coercion, discrimination, and violence. Um, it is also the ability of men and women to express um, and show their sexuality while being free from sexually transmitted diseases, unwanted pregnancy, and even like what I said earlier, the discrimination and violence to, to, their, own, to their own sexuality or gender identity. So, let, now let us proceed in the sexual health issues. So, I stated here a three major problems or issues that some may encounter in their sexual health. So, first we have the sexually transmitted diseases. It is a condition that is being passed from one person to another through sexual contact. And then we also have unwanted pregnancy. It is the unintended, unplanned, missed time, or unwanted in the time of conception. This usually happens um, today which is very relevant today, the teen pregnancies that is botheringly, increasingly, especially in our country. We also have the sexual dysfunction. Um, sexual dysfunction is a common problem to both men and women. It can be caused by physical problems or even medical conditions. So now let us define first the sexually transmitted diseases. So sexually transmitted diseases, STDs, or sexually transmitted infections, or the STIs, are generally acquired through sexual contact, like what I said earlier, from organisms such as bacteria, viruses, parasites. Pass from one person to another person through fluids like blood, semen, and vaginal. So I stated here also some of the most common sexually transmitted diseases all over the world. So first, we have the chlamydia. Um, this disease is caused by a bacteria called chlamydia trachomatis. This can cause a serious problem to women's reproductive system. So we also have the HIV or the AIDS that is very common and fam we are all familiar about because it is, the rate of it in our country is also increasing. So HIV is the human immunodeficiency virus that targeted body's immune system that if it's not treated immediately or properly can result to AIDS. So AIDS is the most serious level of HIV. So now we also have the gonorrhea. Gonorrhea is an infection caused by a sexually transmitted bacterium named Neisseria gonorrhea bacterium and it can also infect both male and female. So we also have diseases like syphilis. Syphilis is a bacterial infection. It gives a painless sore, especially in your genital rectum or mouth. So we also have the trichomoniasis. It's a sexually transmitted disease caused by a parasite. Sexually transmitted disease that I stated here that is most popular or most common in the world is the genital herpes. So this is a common sexually, also a common sexually transmitted disease caused by a herpes simplex virus. So another factor in the sexual health issues is the unwanted pregnancy. It is the pregnancy that is not desired by both party. You know that is this is a very bothering issue that is regarding to sexual health because 
um, a court study shows that the youngest women that bear a child in the Philippines is 10 years old. And it's really bothering. So now we can now proceed in the sexual dysfunction. So sexual dysfunction is a common problem between male and female. It can be caused by physical problems or medical conditions such as heart disease, hormonal imbalance, psychological problems like anxiety, depression, and effects of past trauma. So there, um, I stated here a four major types of sexual dysfunction. We have the desire disorders, arousal disorders, orgasm disorders, and even pain disorders. So we'll be proceeding in the importance of sexual health. So sexual health is being disregarded by many people, but we should all be aware that sexual health is just as important as the physical and mental health. So it includes far more than just avoiding sexually transmitted diseases and unwanted pregnancy. It is also an integral aspect of your health and well-being. Importance of sexual health. So we have here that it can significantly improve an individual's emotional, physical, mental, and even social well-being as well as increasing or improving its intimate relationship. It is also leading to a healthier body, a satisfying sex life, valuing and feeling good about yourself. So having a peace of mind, positive and satisfying relationships, and the, avoid, the avoidment or avoiding the sexually transmitted diseases and unwanted pregnancies. So that is the importance of sexual health. Imagine how it can rele relevantly improve our life not, because it is not just only about the sexual intercourse, the diseases, the pregnancy, but it also reflects to us as a person. So now let, let us proceed in some of the meat and facts about sexual health. This is the most common misconceptions that we can hear all around us. So let us debunk this meat and let us um, expose the truth. First meat is that oral sex is safe. Yes, oral sex is safe if you are avoiding unwanted pregnancies, but it will not guarantee that you will also avoid the risk of having sexually transmitted diseases. So next is, it is easy to tell that someone has a sexually transmitted diseases or someone is infected. The truth is, it is true that someone might have symptoms of sexually transmitted diseases, but not always. So in many instances, the only way that someone can know that he or she is um, being infected by sexually transmitted diseases is to get tested. So we can just judge other people that they have a sexually transmitted diseases. It is rude and it is disrespectful to their well-being. So next myth is that condoms mean safe sex. So the truth here is, it is true that condom will help to lessen the risk of getting pregnant, but make sure that you are using it properly. And it doesn't also guarantee a 100% safeness or that you'll be 100% sure that you'll not get pregnant. It is also important to know the use of contraceptions. Um, women should know how to take care of themselves by visiting or being assessed by a ob to ask for a proper advice whether to take some pills to not get pregnant easily. So contraceptions is really a must, if even, especially if you are sexually active. So next mate is that only gay men can have HIV or sexually transmitted diseases. So the truth here is, it is not true. Um, sexually transmitted diseases can be passed even through females and you can have it regardless of your sexual gender identity sexual orientation so next is pulling out before ejaculation is safe so the truth here is men secrete fluid even before the ejaculation pace and women also secrete the vaginal fluid during arousal and so this exchange of fluids might not cause pregnancy but cause sexually transmitted infections even if one pulls out before the ejaculation. Next myth is that HIV can be transmitted through any body fluids. So the truth here is, yes, HIV can be transmitted through body fluids like semen, blood, 
or even breast milk. But it is not transmitted to other bodily fluids like rain, saliva, and tears. So that is where our discussion about sexual health and its subtopics will end. So always remember that taking care of our body is a must because health is wealth. And being aware of sexual health is also fundamental in our overall well-being. It is as important as our physical, mental, and emotional health. So we must also take care of our sexual health because that will also integrate a part within us. So remember to always take care of our bodies. And it is very important to be well aware and educated about our sexual health. Thank you!